Hi, kids. Remember me? I'm the Good Samaritan's donkey. Do you remember what we've been learning about the past couple weeks? First, we learned to love God with all our heart and our soul and our strength and our mind. Then last week, we learned that we need to love people, just like my master, the Good Samaritan, did. The first way we do that is we notice the need. Say that with me. Notice the need. Good job. How did you guys do noticing the need this past week? That's awesome. Today, we're going to go back to that story about my master, the Good Samaritan, and we're going to see that he didn't just notice the need, then he did something about it. We're going to call it Meet the Need. You ready to learn? But first, let's review our memory verse. Here's the song. love singing so much, I think we should sing our Books of the Bible song, too. You ready for that one? Here it goes! Let's learn the Books of the Bible! Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. 
Joshua judges Ruth. First and second Samuel, first and second Kings, first and second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job and Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, you did it! That's the Old Testament. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. You guys are doing great, but let's speed it up for the New Testament! Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, and Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Let's keep going, everybody! Hebrews and James! Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Jude and Revelation. Oh yeah! We did it! That's the New Testament. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Now we know the books of the Bible. Now we know the books of the Bible. Now we know the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Because we love God's Word. Well, now that we're warmed up, I think it's time to practice our books of the Bible. To help us with that, meet my friend, Mr. Hand. Take it away, Mr. Hand. Thanks, Donkey. Hi, guys. I'm Mr. Hand. It's nice to meet you. Are you ready to practice your books of the Bible? Today, we're going to add a few new ones. So let's do it. Everyone, show me your hand. We're going to learn the books of the Bible. We're going to learn the books of the Bible. We're going to learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs. Nicely done, you guys. Keep practicing those. Remember, when we finally get back to meeting together as a church again, we will have a prize for people who memorize all the books of the Bible. The story we're studying this month about the Good Samaritan comes from the book of Luke in the New Testament. Let's watch a video about the story. The Miracle of Mercy, the Good Samaritan. This is Jesus. <laughs> who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. You see, when Jesus was on earth, he wanted everyone to know what God thought about things. So he took every opportunity to teach people about God's heart. <clears throat> One day, a religious expert stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? <laughs> what does the law say? The man answered, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> right. All right. Do this and you will live. Wait. The man then asked, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. Ah! They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. <laughs> by chance, a priest came along. <laughs> but when he saw the man lying there, Ugh, yuck. he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. La 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 la, la 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 la, la 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 la, whoa! 
Another man who worked in the temple who was called a Levite walked over and looked at him lying there. Please help. Uh, huh? But he also passed by on the other side. Then a Samaritan came along. Uh. Samaritans were hated by Jews. They were seen as lesser people and Jews would not interact with them. But when the Samaritan saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his donkey and took him to an inn, where he took care of him. One room, please. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. Hi guys, I'm back. Donkey and Mr. Hand have been doing such a good job teaching you guys, I don't even think I'm needed anymore. I almost let them do this last part, but The Good Samaritan is such a good story. I wanted to talk to you guys about it for a little while. I know we watched that same video last week, um, but we thought that this is such an important, valuable story and that we can learn so much from what, from what The Good Samaritan did that we wanted to talk about it for three weeks. So last week, we, know, we, talk, we learned that The Good Samaritan noticed the need. He saw the guy on the side of the road, and when the priest and the Levite just walked past him because they were afraid he might be dead or that the robbers might be waiting for them, the Samaritan stopped. He noticed the need, and he stopped to help him. And so often in life, we just go so fast that we don't notice the needs. And so last week, we talked about uh, how can you notice the needs around you. In our family God time, we gave you the opportunity to go on a prayer walk with your family. And that as you were walking through the neighborhood, just like normal and talking, that you would just include God in the conversation. How many of you guys did that? Raise your hand. Okay. Well, if you didn't do it last week, you could totally do it again this week. I know my family, we did it, and it was a little bit crazy and a lot of running around and um, a lot of distraction, but it was kind of fun praying for some of the houses that we know, uh, the people who live there, and some of the houses that we didn't know the people that live there. We could just pray for them that God would show, show them his love. We even got to see people in their front yard and have conversations, which was really nice because during this coronavirus, we're not getting to see that many people. So I encourage you, if you didn't do it last week, go on a prayer walk in your neighborhood with your family this week. So last week, we talked about noticing the need. This week, we want to talk all about meeting the need. Can you say with me, meet the need? Ready? One, two, three. Meet the need. So meeting the need means you notice the need and then you do something about it. So the Good Samaritan, he noticed the man lying on the side of the road, half dead. And so he did a bunch of things to help that man. I want you to take 30 seconds right now and uh, whoever you're watching this with, would you tell them what did the Good Samaritan do? What were the things that the Good Samaritan did? All right, go.
my Bible, I'm reading from the NLT translation, I came up with a whole bunch of things that the Good Samaritan did. Let me read them to you. He felt compassion. He kneeled beside the man. The Good Samaritan soothed his wounds with medicine. He bandaged them. He put the man on his own donkey, which means he had to walk then. He took him to an inn. He took care of him at the inn. And the next day, the Good Samaritan gave the innkeeper more money to take care of the man. That's a lot of things that the Good Samaritan did to meet the needs of the injured man. So this week, what could you do to meet the needs of those around you? As you go on a prayer walk around your neighborhood, maybe you'll notice some things. What if you uh, found some flowers and left them on a neighbor's doorstep? Or what if you colored a picture or wrote a letter and left that at, at your neighbor's doorstep or in their mailbox? Or what if you just cut out a heart and said, Jesus loves you, I'm praying for you, and stuck that on your neighbor's door? You could pick out a toy that you don't need anymore and give that to a, a neighbor kid. Give them something to play with while they're stuck at home in this quarantine. What if you went on another prayer walk and as you saw trash on the ground, you picked it up and put it in a bag and threw it away when you got home? Or you could bake cookies with your grownups and give those to your neighbors. These are just a few ideas of things you could do to meet the needs of those around you. I'm excited to hear what you do. If you do anything fun, take a picture and post it to our Facebook page and we would love to share it on our kids service next week. So go ahead and turn to the people sitting with you right now and come up with one thing that you might try to do this week to meet the needs of those around you. Ready? Go. Those are some great ideas. I cannot wait to see those pictures. Well, all of this reminded me of a song that I used to sing when I was a kid going to Sunday school church. And so I thought I would bring it back. It's called Fa La 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 Leluya. And it has a bunch of actions that you can do with, with the people sitting around you. I remember when I used to sing it in church, they would come up with a bunch of more uh, actions that we could do, not just the ones in the song. So after the service, Feel free to make up some of your own. And again, take a video of yourself doing it and post it to our Facebook page. And we would love to feature it on our kids video next week. All right, so here is our song. Shake a friend's hand, shake a hand next to you. Shake a friend's hand and sing la la. Shake a friend's hand, shake a hand next to you. Shake a friend's hand and sing. Sing la la.
for today. I sure hope you had fun listening to Donkey and Mr. Hand and learning about the Good Samaritan and how you can meet the need this week. Say that with me. This week, I will meet the need. Awesome. Let's say it one more time together. One, two, three. This week, I will meet the need. Yes. Now I'm going to play the song that we opened with this morning. It's by a children's choir in Africa. And I love the words of the song that we will go. That plays along just perfectly with what we're learning. We will go and meet the needs around us. Bye, you guys. Have a great week and go meet the needs around you this week. Love you. Bye. Open.